All right, I wanted to put together a quick video, or not so quick, I usually go long, on um, basically taking an online repository and creating a fork of it. This is for my computer game design class in particular, because a lot of the tutorials that we are doing in class are ones where I give you some starter code to work off of. And so, but when you work on it, I want you to have your own online repository. A couple of the tools you're going to need is you're going to need to install Git. And so if you type Git, you can see Git bash pop up like this. You know you have it. If you don't have it, you can just go open up Google and then type Git and hit enter git.scm.com right here. You click it and you can download it. So you need to have that downloaded first. That will manage your Git projects on your computer. And then you're going to need an account on either GitHub like you see here, or an account on Bitbucket, like you see here. Okay, so with that being said, I, uh, I'm going to go back a step. I'm going to post a link to the Shooting Gallery uh, Git repository, and so this is where you can get it. Now, the process you're going to follow is you're just going to, you could clone it, but I'd, I'd prefer you just to download a zip version, extract it, move your files wherever you want them, and then work off of Git that way. So we're going to start by going to the link, clicking download zip, or click don't clone or download, and download zip. So I already downloaded it over here, so I'm just going to click show in folder. And there it is. And so once you download it, it's all downloaded. You'll notice the little zipper on there. Um, that zipper is to indicate that this is a zip file. It's, notice it says under type it's compressed. So you need to decompress it, you need to extract. So I right click on the folder, notice how it's highlighted, I click extract all, and I'm going to extract them, they're going to go right into this downloads folder. I'm going to go ahead and click extract, and once that's done, we're going to get the files, there they are. And if you open this up, you'll see these are the files. Uh, we have assets, we have some graphics in here, you're going to see uh, we have one room, room zero, and so you're just going to take all this and put it where you want it. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose copy. And then I'm going to go to my documents folder where I'm storing my projects. I have a folder that says game design tutorials. If you don't have one, you just click the create folder icon, create a folder. And then uh, what we can do is create one more folder in here and we'll call it shooting gallery. And then um, I'm going to open that up and paste all my files there. Right click and paste. Control V does the same thing. So once you have your files in there, you've got a copy of it, what you're going to need to do is basically turn this folder into a Git repository. That will be what we call your local repository, which means the copy of the, and by the way, we also use the term repo a lot. So I'm going to be using the term repo from here on out. So you're going to create a local version of your repo, and then you're going to push all of this onto an online site where you can store it and manage it. So the first thing we want to do, actually, the, we can do this in any order. I'm going to go ahead and create my repository online first, and then I will push my project onto it. So the first step I will do is create a new repository. So I click on the plus sign, I choose New Repository. I'm going to need to give it a, uh, a name. So I give it a name here. So once you have the name here, and of course if you have another similar one, it'll tell you. If you get this where it says it will be created as, uh, that means you're good, it likes your name. I'll point out that wherever there's a space, it has to replace it with a dash. You can add a description, but you don't have to. Now, we already have the files, we just haven't pushed them up here. So the best way to do this is when you create your repository, is not to check anything here. To so leave all of this as is. Don't touch it. If you want to add a description, that's fine. Click Create Repository. By the way, you can always add a description later. If you do that right, you'll end up with this. And let me show you also how I do this on Bitbucket, uh, just so you can see how similar it is. Once you have your account, you'll have to get your own account and deal with all of that. Notice, you click new, it's a plus sign just like that, and repository name. 
shooting gallery game. Um, you can make it private. That's a little bit different. And then you click create repository. Oh, apparently I already have that one as a name. We'll call it my most awesome. I don't recommend you do a repository name that long, but you click create. Guess what? You have the same number of commands that you see here. Okay. So at this point, um, we need to now create the local one and send all of our information to the live one. So I'll show you that. So that what you want to do is you, you find the folder where you have it, and you have two ways of doing this. You could right-click on the empty space and choose Git, Git Bash here, or you can go out of folder, make sure it's highlighted, and do a Git Bash here. So if you look here, you'll see the folder name ending with shooting gallery. I'm going to exit out and we'll do this on the blank spot here. Get bash here. You'll notice same folder. As long as you see the folder, this needs to match up with where your project is. If I type ls, I'll see it stands for list. And so you can see these are the folders. Anything that's blue is a folder. Anything that's white is a file. So you can see the file. So that's one way to identify that. So at this point, this is not technically a repo yet. In order to make it a repo, we need a git command, which is git for git. That's the program that's doing this. Add a space and then type init. Init is short for initialize. Initialize means to just begin and create it. So, and it says it initialized empty git repository. And then we see this little dot git slash here. You'll also notice that you'll see in parentheses master, and it's blue. What, we, what it's saying here is that you are now on the master or the main branch. Okay, so don't worry about branches. We're not going to deal with that now, but that's what it is in later tutorials when we talk about more advanced techniques and get, you'll, we'll talk about branching. So if we go back here, you can now see this hidden folder. Now, if you don't see the hidden folder, it may be that your view settings are off. So what you probably want to make sure you do is click view and then make sure these two boxes are checked. This one, hidden items. If I have that unchecked, we can't see that folder anymore. If I go back in and I check it, now we can see it. It's because it's a hidden folder. They hide it so that it's, it's, you're less likely to mess with the folder if it's hidden. And so, because this is very important, you don't want to touch anything that's inside of the folder. If you do, you could break everything you've done and, and lose possibly a lot of information that's important. Once you have it, you got this, I want you to do a little command called status, git status. Git status tells you the status of your folder. And right away, it says what branch you're on, branch master. It says no commits. A commit is a basically a capture or a snapshot of your project at that moment in time. Now I'm not going to go into the reasons for Git and all that explanation. Other tutorials cover that, and in my class I go over that heavily. What we need to do is we need to track and commit files. So right now none of these are tracked. They're all listed as red, which means none of these are going to be committed. We have to determine what we want to commit. Now we can do it a couple different ways. In our case, the most efficient way is get add, or get add dot. So I recommend you do it that way. But let me just show you a couple other options you have. You could put get add, you could put star dot yyp. And I type get status. And you'll see now it says new file and that's green. So now we're tracking this file because we added anything that had a yyp on it. But these folders are not being tracked. So it's usually, you can also track by folder. So you can put get add assets, hit enter. And now, now you notice this little warning, just ignore it. it. Has to do, LF stands for line feed, and then CR stands for carriage return, and don't even worry about it. So now if I do get status, note, you'll see not only is assets, but every file inside of assets is now being tracked. So then we're just going to do the git add dot, which is what I told you to do in the first place. And if you did it, then you'd be set. You get a lot of those warnings. And now when you do git status, bam, you, everything is green. There is no red. You can scroll up and see that that is true. You're good to go. So now everything is staged, but nothing is committed yet. 
So what you need to do is you need to basically commit it, which is this is the final step in preserving the work you've done. So that's git commit. Now, if I just hit enter right now, um, it's going to throw us into an editor, which you're not going to want to mess with if you are new to all this stuff. So what you want to do is do a git commit dash m, and then in quotes you want to add a message. And I'm just going to put adding um, starter code. So this is basically, um, you can also, a lot of people will say, you know, uh, adding initial files or starting project or code start, whatever, something to just indicate this is like the first commit. And I hit enter and you see all this create mode. Now if I type git status, it says on branch master, nothing to commit, working tree clean. Okay, so, so basically now I have just preserved this project exactly as it is in this moment in time. So this is cool because if I do something and I mess up, I can always roll back to where it is on this day at this time. And so that's part of the power. And I'll show you visually what that looks like. But now we're ready to connect to either Bitbucket or GitHub. And I'm going to do GitHub in this one. And if you look here, it says create a new repository on the command line. And in a way, we did some of this. You can ignore this. This is actually creating a file on command line and adding content in it. We already did git in it. We already did a git add. We already did a git commit. So we've actually done all of this. So really, if you look at it, these two lines are exactly the same as this, and that's because it's an existing repository. So push means send it from our computer to this website. And you can do one line at a time or check this out. You can actually just clip this. It gets everything on there. You go in here and you right click. By the way, there is no control V. And so you have to just right click or you can hold down shift and type the insert key. And notice the what it does is it runs the first command and it waits for the second command. When I hit enter, it should ask for my username and password. It didn't. It's probably because I've already said it earlier. But if it asks for username and password, it's the username and password of the GitHub site. Okay, and that should you should need a video on that. Um, so watch this to check to see if you did it right. Go to the site, hit refresh. Right there, we can see one commit, one branch, no releases, one contributor. We've got our files right here. Now check this out. I click one commit. I click on it. Notice it says adding starter code. That's the message. The message is really important because in your project you're going to have hundreds maybe even thousands of commits if it's a really big project that you are working on or you're working on with multiple people and you're actually working on live software. You could have like thousands of commits. And so having a nice little description of what you did is really helpful. At this point now, you have everything. You have, a, you have your whole project backed up. So what's beautiful about this is now I could go home, I could get on another computer, and I could get my files and work on it. So how would I do that? So this, notice, this is my shooting gallery game, and I can work on this and send changes. I just sent some changes. This is not the same as the site I was on before. Let's go back a couple links. So notice that one was called Shooting Gallery GMS2 Setup, and now the new one is just Shooting Gallery Game. So this is a fork. This is its own project, and so I can build off of this. So let me show you how I get a copy of this. Actually, I'm running low on time, so I think on the next tutorial, I will show you how to get a copy, work on it, and send my changes from another computer. Stay tuned for that.